Good morning and welcome to St. John Anglican Church Sunday service. We're really glad you could join us. A few announcements to make. Uh, do know that we do have our vestry meeting coming up on Saturday, February the 20th. It'll be at 10 o'clock and it will be virtual, it'll be on Zoom. So please do look out for that information because we really would like as many of you to attend their vestry meeting as possible. So that's Saturday, February the 20th. Also, please do join us for our tea and coffee fellowship after this, if you are watching at uh, Sunday morning. It's at 11 o'clock, and just go onto the website and look up the information. As well, we have our weekly prayer group, which meets Monday to Friday at 9 o'clock. Again, just go onto the website and look up the Zoom information, and we really wish you could join us. Let us take a moment now to prepare ourselves for holy worship. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us together pray the call for this day. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy to you of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to St. John's Sunday School. Do you remember when we spoke about parables? Well, a parable is a story told to us in a way that we might understand something that is important. The parables of Jesus were told thousands of years ago. The people and the places that Jesus spoke about then are not the same as the people and the places now. All that has changed. But the stories teach us the same truths about our time now. Let's open up the parable box and see what's inside. Perhaps we'll be able to see the kingdom of God through this parable. Oh, it's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Listen, and I'll tell it to you. A man was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Robbers came and attacked him and hurt him and took everything he had and left him by the road, half dead. A great priest from the temple in Jerusalem was going down that same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side and totally ignored him. A Levite, who is a person who also works in the temple in Jerusalem, was going down the road as well. When he saw the injured man, he too crossed the road, and passed by on the other side. Then there was a person who came along the same road who did not live in Jerusalem. He was visiting from a country called Samaria. Now the people in Jerusalem didn't care for the people of Samaria, and the people from Samaria didn't like the people from Jerusalem either. But when the person from Samaria saw the injured man, he had compassion. He stopped and went to him. He put medicine on him his cuts, and then he put him on his donkey and took him to an inn and stayed with him all that night. And in the morning, he told the innkeeper that the man could stay there as long as he had to to recovery and that he would pay for all the costs. Now, one of the ten best ways to live asks us to love our neighbor. I wonder who the real neighbor was in this story. Was it the priest and the Levite who lived in Jerusalem and were from that neighborhood? 
Or was the man from Samaria who didn't live in the neighborhood? This parable that Jesus told us so many years ago has the same valuable lesson today. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for children, their bright spirits, their inquisitive minds, and their gentle hearts. May they grow into a world of one neighborhood where peace and love and compassion for each other abide. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned away from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. If you are following along in your bulletin, please feel free to read the psalm with me. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor, my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is your refuge. Those of high degree are not but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery. Take no empty pride, though, though wealth increase. Set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. 
for the present form of this world is passing away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little farther, and he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Our scripture for today is Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5 and 10, Psalm 62, 1 Corinthians 7, 29 to 31, and Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Dear friends, I'm your guest preacher today because the leadership folks at the Vancouver School of Theology offers their students an opportunity to share their experience of their learning and spiritual journey as a way of keeping their local church informed about life at Vancouver School of Theology and as a way for the student to grow in their pastoral relationships. And it doesn't hurt to learn how to do a sermon either. Some of you know that I attended Vancouver School of Theology a while back in 2002 and graduated with a Master of Arts in Theology degree. Patrick, our priest, and I were classmates back then, and our friendship has been an important part of my Christian journey. I attended the Vancouver School of Theology as a part-time student from September 2002 to May 2007. Somehow, with much help from my friends and family, I was also able to maintain my self-employed private music therapy practice. The folks I worked with then and now were quite amenable to adjusting their schedules so that we could continue to share our love of music together and also be certain that I could study at Vancouver School of Theology. I enjoyed my studies and upon graduation, I returned to work in and around Vancouver as a certified, accredited music therapist. I consider my work to be a vocation, a calling. I have worked as a music therapist providing health care and pastoral care for those who live in group homes or those who attend adult daycare centers and those receiving treatment in general, psychiatric and children's hospitals. I go where I'm called to go, and as a therapy is very much somewhat of a micro-ministry and one of the helping professions, I have had many occasions to work alongside ordained clergy and others from a variety of faith traditions and diverse spiritual practices. In fact, soon after graduating from VST, I was appointed as chaplain for the Royal Canadian Legion branch number 118 in 2009, and then in 2017, I was also appointed as chaplain for the North Shore Veterans Council of Canada, where I assisted Father Charles Walters until he became too frail for public worship on Remembrance Day. Another chaplain, Liz Lindsay, Father Robin Ruder Sidis, Reverend Andres Raban and I enjoyed much camaraderie as we prepared for Remembrance Day ceremonies every year. Father Charles was a wonderful and kind mentor, a prayerful friend,
who encouraged me to step into the role of chaplain and confidently continue in his footsteps. Rather big shoes to fill. I continue to enjoy a wonderful camaraderie with the others I've mentioned as well. I served on the board at Lynn Valley United Church while that community underwent much change as we rebuilt a new church in that community in North Vancouver. I still maintain friendships with the folks in that congregation. During my term as board chair for Lynn Valley United Church, I too experienced much transition and growth. And it was very helpful to have the kind of support that this faith community here at St. John the Evangelist Anglican Church has offered. It started out as uh, an outreach and the form of rehearsal space for the Mixed Abilities Choir. And then it changed. I joined this church uh, later in 2016, and I have experienced a call to move further along on my faith journey. A journey to teach, to heal, and to preach about God's love for a hurting yet beautiful world. In Anglican parlance, it's some of the marks of mission, if you will. And I am beginning the process of discernment for taking holy orders in the Anglican Church. Our priest and friend, Reverend Patrick Blaney, has kindly supported my faith journey, as many of you here have. And while at St. John's for the past couple of years, Patrick and others kept me quite busy. Lots of learning. I am serving on the altar guild as a liturgical assistant, an intercessor. I make phone calls on the bone tree ministry, and I've offered a sermon at least once a month. And before the pandemic began, I was helping out with Cafe Church and a hot senior's lunch. Phew! <laughs> a lot of fun, a lot of pastoral care, a lot of friendship. Since the pandemic began, I have had much time to consider next steps for my faith journey, trusting that each step will be shown and that with God's help and others' help, I will carefully find my way. In my work and volunteering in this community, I have presided at weddings for a time, presided at memorials for my comrades and clients, and I have offered prayers on many occasions, some dedications at the Cenotaph for a number of occasions. Pastoral care is a gift that I would name, that I possess, that helps me to express my Christian love for others. And that love is returned to me, multiplied. I returned to the Vancouver School of Theology in the fall of 2020. I am currently participating in morning prayers with other Anglican students. And I took a class in denominational studies called Anglican Polity, Ministry, and Mission taught by the Reverend Grant Rogers. I enjoyed this course. Why? Well, there were guest speakers with rich experience steeped in the Anglican tradition, required readings and texts to digest, uh, digest before a three-hour virtual class every Tuesday from 2 to 5 p.m., library modules once a month on Saturdays, and regular worship on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Life at VST is full, abundant, and lots of friendships. It has been a good exercise in discipline to keep myself grounded, balanced, and capable of scholarship in these trying times. I did hear a call back in 1990 to be a music therapist, and I risked much and left much behind to embrace my profession. And I was helped along the way by committing to hard work and trusting that all would be well. 
Then I heard a call in 2001 to return to school and listen to and study God's Word. And now, like Jonah, who was provided for by God, and like the psalmist in Psalm 62, who knows that God is the rock and salvation. The very same God who provides these things for those who are called also invites us into close, intimate relationship to trust and pour out our heart before him, as Paul spoke of in 1 Corinthians passage. To know that this earthly existence is but a breath in the universe. To hear and to answer a call again with, yes, yes, Lord, like the first disciples in Mark's passage that we've heard today. Trust that hearing Jesus' call and following Jesus is a call that can be heard and acknowledged on so many levels and lived out in so many ways. Dear friends, thank you for sharing this journey with me. Amen. If you're following along in your boats and we are at the top of page 7, then I might invite you to stand, if you would, and let us confess the faith of our church, as together we say. I believe in God, creator of the universe, dwelling within time and space and eternity. I believe in Jesus Christ, who came to live among us and let us see what God is like. I believe in the Holy Spirit, sent from God through Jesus to be our guide and comforter. Therefore, I believe in hope, in love, in passion, joy, and faith, and forgiveness, and eternal life. Let us pray. Let us offer our prayers as one body as we respond to the refrain, God of grace, with hear our prayer. And once again, God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy One, by our prayers and meditations this day, we open our hearts to draw closer to you. Quieten our minds in these wearisome times so that we may hear your wisdom in our hearts and know your presence in our lives. Like the disciples, we are followers of Jesus and are strengthened by his teachings as one body and one spirit, we offer our hands to heal, our voices to speak of your justice, and our feet to walk humbly in service to others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy One, we hold up all people of faith throughout the world as they pray to you with hope. This day we pray for Bishop Brent Alois and the clergy and people of the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Philippines, and for our companion parish, St. John the Evangelist, Mission and Outstations in Pasnadan, and the Reverend Kenneth Kaos. We pray for our primate Linda Nichols, Indigenous Archbishop Mark MacDonald, for Archbishop Melissa, for John, our coadjutor bishop, and the parishes in our Diocese of St. Agnes, St. Paul, St. Titus, and St. Timothy. We pray for Patrick, our priest, and give thanks for his ministry among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy One, we send our prayers of healing love out into our grieving world. Let us be instruments of your peace 
sowing hope where there is despair and bringing unity where there is division. We pray that by your grace there may be forgiveness and healing in the hearts of those deeply traumatized by the historic institutions of the church worldwide and guide us to listen to the truth with loving kindness. May we live with your wisdom in our hearts and know that we are all one, one spirit, one body, united by love and grace. We pray for our Queen Elizabeth and our leaders, federal, indigenous, provincial and municipal, that they may work together for the health and well-being of all Canadians in seeing us through this pandemic and out of the depths in our communities of addictions, overdoses, homelessness, and poverty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy One, we pray for our parish of St. John's as we continue to build community in new ways. This day, we pray with thanksgiving for the ministry and gifts of parish members, Riley and Andy, Glenn, Diane and James, Yvonne, Sandra, Omid, Maria, Jonathan and Kiara. And we lift up to you in prayer all those who have a special need this day, and we call upon you to heal and to comfort them. We hold before you Berna, Bruce and Anne, Elsie, Wilma, Kelly, Dorothy, J, Ellie, Allison, M, Andy and Riley, Meheranisa, Doreen, Ruby, Francis, Flo, for Barbara, Carla and their family, CJLT, Sandro, Leslie, Ron and Rosemary, for Pat K, Lynn, Perry, Maria, Joan. For Liam, Heather, Anne, Avis, Yvonne. For Joel, Leone, Omid, and Everett. And we pray for all those who we hold quietly in our hearts. May your loving presence surround them and their caregivers. We remember all the families who have lost loved ones this week, especially in our care homes. And we give thanks for their contributions and for our loved ones now departed, who have been such a blessing to us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy One, we pray for a week that is full of your grace and love, in the pleasures and pains of this life and in the joy and sorrows. May we lean on you as our rock and our refuge. We give thanks for one another seeing in each other the light of Christ that weaves us together as one spirit. All our prayers we ask in the name of your son Jesus, who loves and cares for each and every soul. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God invites us and welcomes all of us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you're by yourself or standing close to someone, maybe stand up and let us share the peace of Christ, the love, the joy, and the light that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace be with you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, sustainer of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your 
command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. Glory to you forever and ever. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turn against you and betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Again and again you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages you reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time you sent your Son, born of a woman, to be our Savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his death, he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for sending us Jesus the Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks to you and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. Glory to you forever and ever. Gracious God, we recall the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension, and we look with expectation for his coming as Lord of all the nations. We who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring you these gifts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this offering of your church, that we who eat and drink at this holy table may share the divine life of Christ the Lord. Glory to you forever and ever. Pour out your Spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom, where peace and justice are revealed, that we with all your people of every language, race, and nation may share the banquet you have promised. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. Glory to you forever and ever.
As our Savior taught us to pray, let us say. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. blood of Christ, a cup of love. I would invite you to put your hand over your heart and accept the communion of God. Amen. If you're following along in your bulletin, we are at the top of page 15, and let us pray together. Gracious God, our hands have taken holy things. Our lives have been nourished by the body of your Son. May we who have eaten this, of this holy table be strengthened for service in your world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind and knowledge in the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you all this day and forever and ever and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord by praising God. Thanks be to God. 